بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله في البداية أود الترحيب بصديقي وزميلي معالي الوزير توني بلينكن الذي زارنا يوم أمس أولا بالمشاركة في تشجيع منتخب الولايات المتحدة ونهنيكم على هذا الأداء المبهر يوم أمس ونتمنى لكم إن شاء الله حظا أوفر في المباريات القادمة ونتطلع إلى تكون هذه البطولة في قطر عام 2022 هي محطة لتجمع الشعوب ولتلاقي الثقافات ولتلاقي كافة الحضارات والاستمتاع بما توفره الأجواء هنا في الدوحة وتجربة ضيافة الشعب القطري والمقيمين على أرض قطر طبعا كانت لنا فرصة اليوم لإقامة الجولة الخامسة من الحوار الاستراتيجي القطري الأمريكي والذي نعتبره منصة هامة في تعزيز العلاقات الثنائية بين بلدينا التي تتمتع بأسس قوية وصلبة وشراكة متعددة الأوجه وتعتبر من أهم الشراكات الاستراتيجية لدولة قطر طبعا الشراكة تمتد من الشراكة السياسية وفي مجال الدفاع والأمن وفي المجالات الاقتصادية والتنموية كان اليوم لدينا فرصة لمناقشة قضايا متعددة سواء كان على ما يخص القضايا الإقليمية وأيضا التحديات التي يواجهها العالم اليوم كان على أجدة اجتماعاتنا مناقشة تطورات طبعا الاتفاق النووي الإيراني وأيضا التطورات في الساحة العراقية ولبنان وليبيا وأيضا القضية الفلسطينية التي تعتبر القضية المركزية لدينا كما ناقشنا أيضا الجهود المشتركة في أفغانستان دولة قطر والولايات المتحدة تتوافق في وجهات النظر حيال هذه القضايا ونتطلع للعمل سويا ما بين فرق العمل التي ستستأنف المحادثات بين المؤسسات المعنية في الدولتين كما أيضا كان هناك فرصة لمناقشة كيفية الاستجابة للتحديات العالمية بشكل مشترك وخصوصا تحديات الطاقة و الأبد الغذائي والتحديات التنموية الأخرى التي تواجه عالمنا اليوم نتطلع في دولة قطر دائما لتعزيز الشراكة مع الولايات المتحدة ونتطلع لأن يكون هناك دائما حوار مفتوح وعلاقة مبنية على الثقة المتبادلة وعلى الشفافية في بين الدولتين وأود أن أثبر في هذه المرحلة التعاون الذي أبدته الولايات المتحدة بمؤسساتها المختلفة لدعم إقامة بطولة كأس العالم ونشكركم على كافة الجهود التي قام فيها خصوصا المؤسسات الأبنية ومؤسسات الأبن الفضائي في الولايات المتحدة للدعم الذي قدمته لدولة قطر في إقامة هذه البطولة وهذا جزء من التعاون الذي يمتد بوراء الشراكة الشراكات المتعددة بين الدولتين نتمنى لكم حظا موفقا مع الوزير لمنتخبكم في كاس العالم ونتمنى نراك مرة أخرى ويكون منتخبكم أيضا متأهلا طبعا كموقف سياسي يجب أن نشجع فقط منتخب دولة قطر ونتمنى له التوفيق دائما ولكن أيضا نتمنى التوفيق لمنتخبكم شكرا Well, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, Mr. Minister, Mohammed, thank you. Uh, thank you for your uh, wonderful hospitality. Thank you for the very good and detailed conversations that we just had uh, as part of the Fifth Strategic Dialogue. Um, I have to say that having proudly hosted the opening of the fourth uh, U.S.-Qatar uh, Strategic Dialogue in Washington last year, uh, I can objectively concede that our hosts have outdone us when it comes to entertainment surrounding the dialogue. Um, it was absolutely thrilling to watch Team USA play uh, last night. Uh, thrilling as an American, uh, thrilling as a, as a soccer fan or football fan. 
and our team played with so much heart and made our country proud. Uh, and we're anxious to see the, uh, the rest of the tournament uh, and the games that follow. Now, I know that neither of us notched the, uh, the win that we wanted in, in our first match. Um, I'm reminded of the, the wisdom of a great American philosopher, basketball coach, uh, Greg Popovich, who once said, and I quote, the measure of who we are is how we react to something that doesn't go our way, which is true for diplomacy as well as in sports. Uh, so we meet at what is a high point of the five decade long diplomatic relationship between our countries uh, on every issue that matters to our nations. Our collaboration, I think it's fair to say, is deeper, and our people are the better off for it. Uh, the security ties between us have never been stronger. Qatar hosts our largest military base in the region, which is an anchor for regional security and regional stability. Uh, in March, uh, President Biden designated Qatar as a major non-NATO ally. Several months later, we began delivering F-15 aircraft to the Qatar Emory Air Force raising its defense capabilities, making our militaries more interoperable. Uh, we're partnering in the region and beyond to enhance stability, to reduce tensions, to end conflicts. Qatar has provided vital economic assistance to the Palestinian people. It's helped pay the salaries of security forces in Lebanon. It's brokered peace between Chad's transitional government and opposition groups. And Qatar consistently works to mend regional rifts, which is essential to addressing the common challenges that we face. Uh, we're also deepening economic ties uh, from civil aviation to renewable energy. Qatari and American businesses, innovators, are creating new opportunities for people in both of our countries. Uh, we welcome the Emir's commitment to ramp up Qatar's production of liquefied natural gas. That will bolster global energy security. It will help people around the world who are struggling to keep up with rising costs. Uh, and we recognize Qatar's efforts to curb emissions, like joining the Global Methane Pledge, and its investments in technologies to foster a clean energy transition in the years ahead. Where conflicts and deep instability persist, we are working to help people who are suffering as a result. When the Taliban forcibly took power in Afghanistan, Qatar played an indispensable role in helping the United States relocate tens of thousands of at-risk Afghans aid workers, diplomats, and others. More Afghans came through Doha than any other place in the world. The work continues as Qatar continues to provide a transit point for Afghans who are on their way to starting new lives in the United States. We're profoundly grateful for the role that Qatar and Mohammed, you in particular, your team, have played in helping secure the release of uh, US citizen Mark Freerix, uh, after more than two and a half years of captivity in Afghanistan. The strategic dialogue that we launched today uh, will build on this robust cooperation in all of these areas, but also many others, including cultural and educational cooperation, counterterrorism, visa and consular issues, labor issues, human trafficking, all of which we've worked on in the run-up to this historic sporting event. Uh, we congratulate Qatar on hosting the first World Cup in the Middle East. The Emir's statement that all are welcome here for the World Cup is an important message for an event that brings together people from all walks of life, nations, faiths, sexual orientations, races, and other forms of diversity. Now it's important to make that inclusivity a reality. We also applaud the historic step of opening direct flights between Tel Aviv and Doha for the duration of the World Cup which shows the promise of expanding people-to-people -people ties and economic ties between countries. Now, a massive amount of work goes into hosting an event like this. Uh, we know that without workers, including many migrant workers, this World Cup simply would not have been possible. Qatar's made meaningful strides in recent years to improve its labor laws, to expand worker rights. The United States has been and will continue to be a consistent partner in those efforts. Of course, real work remains on these issues, and the United States will continue to work with Qatar on strengthening labor rights and human rights more broadly long after the World Cup is over. Uh, today, we signed a letter of intent to expand our cooperation on promoting accessibility, combating human trafficking, 
improving labor practices. These efforts align with President Biden's commitment to make human rights a pillar of our foreign policy and uh, core to our values and our interests. Uh, before last night's game, I had a chance to watch uh, some young players, uh, teenagers from the United States, from Qatar, from Canada and Mexico, uh, doing drills on a pitch. Um, as a lifelong soccer fan, and uh, it's charitable to say a mediocre player, um, it reminded me of one of the very best things about this sport. No matter where you go, every corner of the world, and this has been my experience the last two years, you find people who love the game. They love to play it, they love to watch it, they love to argue about it, uh, they love rooting and supporting a team with all of the joy and occasional heartbreak uh, that that brings. And in a world where we're so often on a daily basis reminded of what makes us different, what divides us, soccer is a powerful unifying force, a language, a common language that pretty much the entire world speaks. So I wish all of the countries represented here a successful tournament and go Team USA. Thank you. بعد اذنكم ننتقل الى اسئله الصحفيين ونبدا مع الزميله امينه عباد من تلفزيون قطر. السلام عليكم ورحمه الله امينه عباد من تلفزيون قطر سؤال موجه لسعاده الوزير الامريكي سعاده الوزير يعني مع الاخذ بعين الاعتبار التنافسات والصراعات على المستوى الدولي من بينها الحرب الروسيه الاوكرانيه وايضا اثاره مساله التواجد الاستراتيجي الامريكي في منطقه الشرق الاوسط كيف يمكن ان يؤثر ذلك على الشراكه القطريه الامريكيه في المرحله المقبله شكرا Well, thank you. Um, I think what you're seeing evidenced uh, here today throughout all of the strategic dialogues that, uh, that we've done, the new one that we're launching, is that we have a partnership that is both bilateral, uh, it's regional, and increasingly uh, it's global. And we've seen that just in, in, in recent months and recent years in a whole uh, variety of places. Um, the cooperation that I mentioned on Afghanistan, for which the United States is genuinely grateful. Uh, of course, the longtime hosting of, of U.S. forces here in Qatar, uh, the status that Qatar has as a major non-NATO ally that President Biden designated uh, just a few months ago. The work that Qatar is doing, and doing in some cases uh, in um, cooperation with us, to, to mend uh, regional rifts. Uh, the work that Qatar is doing to support the Palestinian people, uh, which is vital and important. The principled stand that Qatar has taken on Ukraine, uh, and of course, helping to provide for the world's energy needs. In these and so many other areas, uh, we're working ever more closely together, and Qatar is having a, a, a very, very significant impact. There's something else that we talked about today that I think is, is very important. Uh, and that is the work that we're doing and that I hope that we coordinate even more together on providing support and humanitarian assistance to people who need it. This is something that Qatar has been uh, a leader in, um, and the needs around the world are great. We see this in terms of food insecurity, uh, where we're working together. Uh, we see it in terms of um, energy, of course, uh, global health. One of the work efforts that we're going to be taking through the strategic dialogue is having a, a working group together to better coordinate and focus our joint efforts on providing this kind of assistance to countries uh, that are in need. It is usually important that even as we're dealing uh, every day with the consequences of Russia's aggression uh, against Ukraine, and we have to do that, not only for the sake of the people of Ukraine, but because Russia's committed uh, a terrible aggression as well uh, against the very principles of the United Nations Charter that are vital in trying to keep peace and security and stability around the world. Um, even as we're doing that, we're also determined to address the many challenges that people around the world face, some of which have been exacerbated by the, the Russian aggression. But in all of these efforts, our countries are, are working closely together, and that cooperation is deepening. السلام عليكم ورحمة 
رحمه الله السؤال الاول لوزير الخارجيه الامريكي بعد النجاح الامني في تنظيم كاس العالم هنا في الدوحه بالتعاون مع دوله قطر كيف سيكون كيف سيساهم توقيع خطاب النوايا ايجابيا وكيف ستكون اليه آلية العمل المشترك بين البلدين سؤالي الثاني لسيد نائب رئيس مجلس الوزراء القطري من خلال متابعتكم مؤخرا للهجمة الإعلامية على دولة قطر هل قلت هذه الهجمة بعد بداية بطولة كأس العالم وأحب أيضا أن أعرف رأي وزير الخارجية الأمريكي في هذا الموضوع Thank you um, I think what's uh, most important to, to highlight is this Our countries have been working closely together, uh, collaborating, uh, dealing with, as I said, both issues between us, regional issues, global issues, well before the World Cup. We continue that collaboration during the World Cup. We're going to pursue it after the World Cup is over. And in fact, the baton is passed to the United States, Mexico, and Canada for 2026. Uh, and the strategic dialogue is at the heart of that. That's why it was so important for us to um, launch the latest round, which we did today. Uh, but in launching the, the strategic dialogue, that starts a whole process where we have working groups between our countries that in a whole variety of areas that we've agreed will pursue deeper collaboration, deeper cooperation. That's the work of the, uh, of the coming months. That's what we started today. Uh, الفاضلة كنت تسالين عن موضوع الهجمه الاعلاميه اولا يعني احب ان انوه بان دوله قطر عندما نالت شرف استضافه كاس العالم كانت حازمه امرها على ان تكون هناك يكون هناك عمل متعدد المجالات للوصول الى هذا التنظيم الذي الحمد لله يعني ابهر العالم جميعا من المؤكد ان هناك كان يعني الاصلاحات التي قامت فيها دوله قطر هناك بعض الوسائل التي لم تاخذ هذا الشيء بعين الاعتبار ويعني للاسف اتت بحكم مسبق بدون على الاقل يعني حتى زياره دوله قطر و الحديث مع المسؤولين فيها ورغم ان دوله قطر كانت دائما تفتح ابوابها للجميع وتتحاور مع الجميع منذ بدات هذه الهجمات. طبعا لا نستطيع تغيير اراء من هم يريدون فقط النيل من سمعه قطر لاهداف او اخرى قد لا تتعلق هذه الاهداف بدولة قطر ولكن الحمد لله أعتقد أن السواد الأعظم من الناس وخصوصا من جمهور كرة القدم عندما أتى إلى الدوحة تفاجأ بهذه الإعدادات الناجحة ودولة قطر والشعب القطري شعب دائما مرحب وبضيافة ومرحب بالجميع ونرى الآن الفرحة في عيون الناس لاستضافة مثل هذا الحدث و نرى فرحة الجمهور وفرحة مشاركتهم ومتعتهم لتجربة شيء جديد لم يتم تجربته مسبقا يعني بطولة كأس العالم كانت في السنوات السابقة دائما تقاب في دول غربية أو في دول أيضا متطورة جدا ولكن أول مرة تقاب في دولة في الشرق الأوسط ودولة صغيرة استطاعت حمل هذه المسؤولية وصولا إلى هذا الهدف طبعا بالنسبة لمسألة الإصلاحات التي حدثت في السنوات الأخيرة الكثير قد يعتقد أن كأس العالم هو السبب الرئيسي لهذه الإصلاحات ولكن نحن نرى أن كأس العالم هو فقط محفز لهذا الشيء ومسرع للعملية بينما هناك رؤية أعلى قيادة يعني رؤية سمو الأمير حفظه الله هي رؤية تحول لدولة قطر ومواكبة للمتغيرات التي تحدث في العالم حولنا وهذه عملية مستمرة وغير منقطعة ولا ترتبط بحدث معين أو بمرحلة معينة وإنما هي رحلة تستكمل نحن نتطلع 
ايضا بمشاركه خبراتنا في تحضير هذه البطوله مع الولايات المتحده والمكسيك وكندا في البطوله القادمه التي نتمنى لهم كل التوفيق والنجاح في استضافتها ورسالتي للجميع لوسائل الاعلام للراي العام بشكل بشكل عام بان دوله قطر ترحب بالجميع، دوله قطر ابوابها مفتوحه دعونا يعني نركز على كره القدم وعلى الجماهير وعلى ما يحدث في ارض الملعب واستمتعوا بما بكافه التحضيرات التي قامت بها دوله قطر ومن اراد ان يطلق احكام مسبقه فقط لتحقيق اهداف اخرى سيكون لذلك فقط اثر مؤقت ولكن في النهايه الحقيقه التي على الارض هي التي تتحدث عن نفسها. Question goes to Michelle Gendor. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, after resolving the immunity uh, issue for Saudi Crown Prince in Washington, should we expect him in uh, Washington soon? And uh, also two weeks uh, ago, uh, President Biden said we are going to free Iran. Uh, what has the U.S. been doing in this regard? Uh, and do you have any comments uh, on Iran announcement today that uh, they have begun producing enriched uranium at 60% purity and do you consider that JCPOA dead? مع الوزير موضوع حقوق الانسان موضوع اساسي في الحوار الاستراتيجي بين البلدين الى اي مدى تشكل هذه المساله نقطه خلاف مع الولايات المتحده وما هي الاصلاحات التي وعدتم بها؟ شكرا. Thank you. Um, with regard to uh, MBS, there are no plans uh, for uh, him to travel to, to Washington. Let me say just more broadly uh, on this question, uh, the question of immunity. We received a request from a federal court that had litigation before it uh, via the Justice Department uh, to uh, ascertain our opinion on his status um, and we conveyed an opinion based on long-standing legal practice that given um, his position as a head of state, head of government or foreign minister, uh, that he was as a legal matter entitled to uh, immunity. This is a determination that we've made in dozens, hundreds of cases over the years, and in every case, we simply follow the law, and that's what we did. Um, the opinion that we provided does not speak in any way to the merits of the case, uh, nor uh, the current status of the bilateral uh, relationship. Uh, our review of that relationship is, uh, is ongoing. Uh, and again, I would note that this opinion was solicited by the court, and it has been our practice. In fact, I can't think of, any, of a case where we didn't, when asked by the court, provide uh, an opinion. Uh, as to um, Iran, I can't uh, uh, confirm any, any reports about their, uh, their activities. It's something that we're looking at uh, very carefully uh, and, uh, and very closely. Uh, and what we've seen, and we've spoken of many, many times, before is that while we continue to believe that the best way to resolve the challenges posed by Iran's nuclear program are through diplomacy, uh, Iran, for uh, a variety of reasons, um, is, has chosen to um, insert extraneous issues into the effort to revive the GC JCPOA. And of course, meanwhile, the world is rightly focused on what's happening inside of Iran uh, the protests uh, that have um, uh, arisen uh, since, the, uh, since the killing of Masa Amini uh, are something that have uh, galvanized, uh, galvanized the world. Uh, and that is where the focus is. And of course, at the same time, the steps that Iran has taken to provide weapons, to provide drones to Russia to aid in its aggression against Ukraine 
uh, are of deep concern and something that we're very focused on. We are taking steps across the board uh, to push back against uh, both the, uh, uh, the actions that Iran is taking to repress its own people in terms of sanctioning those who are responsible and also helping uh, companies make sure that the Iranians have the technology that they need to continue to communicate with one another and to be connected to the outside world. Uh, we're also sanctioning uh, entities that are involved in the pr provision of weapons uh, like drones and, and looking at uh, whatever means are possible to help the Ukrainians defend against the, uh, the use of these weapons. And as we said all along, even as, even as we've been engaged in diplomacy uh, to try to see if uh, we could get a mutual return to compliance with the JCPOA, we continue to exert pressure on Iran for steps that it's taking to uh, strengthen its nuclear program in contravention of the JCPOA itself, as well as the uh, steps that it's taking in, in other areas uh, that um, pose significant uh, challenges, concerns to, uh, to people around the world. بخصوص مسألة حقوق الإنسان وما تم تناوله في الحوار الاستراتيجي أولا نحن نقدر ونثمر شراكتنا مع الولايات المتحدة والتعاون في ما بين مؤسسات الحكومية المختلفة في دولة قطر والولايات المتحدة سواء كان في مجال حقوق الإنسان أو في المجالات الأخرى ولكن كما ذكرت في السابق مسألة حقوق الإنسان في دولة قطر هي مسؤولية من الدولة تجاه الشعب القطري وتجاه كل من يعيش على أرض قطر ودولة قطر كانت قيادتنا يعني حاسمة في هذا الموضوع وهذه الإصلاحات التي تب تبنيها هي لخدمة هذا الهدف طبعا لا يوجد هناك هي المسألة ليست مسألة تعهدات من الدولة لدول أخرى وكما ذكرت نثبت الحوار والشراكة مع الولايات المتحدة ولكن هناك برنامج عمل يتم العمل من خلاله بيننا وبين الولايات المتحدة سواء كان لبناء القدرات بين المؤسسات المختلفة ومؤسسات انفاذ القانون والتعلم والاستفادة من الخبرة التي توجد في الولايات المتحدة هناك نقاط نتفق عليها وهناك نقاط نختلف عليها لأن هذه المسائل عادة تكون وفقا لما يتناسب مع المجتمع الذي تطبق فيه ونحن في دولة قطر كما ذكرت المسألة هي تختص بواجب ومسؤولية الحكومة تجاه شعبها وتجاه توفير البيئة التي تحمي حقوق كل من يعيش على هذه الأرض. Our final question goes to John Hudson of the Washington Post. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, fairly or unfairly, uh, some people have called this the most politicized World Cup in history, due much in part to migrant labor and LGBT issues. Um, as a longtime soccer fan over decades, do you agree with that histor historical assessment of Qatar's place among World Cups? Uh, did that give you any pause about making this trip? Um, separately, what do you think of FIFA's armband edict, which is discouraging a pro-tolerance message? Uh, Minister Altani, uh, it was not long ago that your country was subject to an unprecedented blockade by GCC countries. Uh, and the U.S. government, under a different administration, was largely silent about that act of economic aggression. Was that experience of isolation what propelled Qatar to deepen its relationship with the current administration on so many fronts that have been discussed, whether it be Ukraine or Afghanistan or, or any other issue? John, thank you. Um, first, here in, in Qatar, uh, as we've noted, we've launched the fifth edition of our strategic dialogue. Uh, that is work that uh, started well before uh, the World Cup. Um, it's continuing during the World Cup, and it will continue uh, after the World Cup. Uh, and in that, as we've discussed, we are working on the broad array of issues that join our countries together, uh, as well as 
working through areas where uh, we have some, uh, some differences. Uh, it also happens that the World Cup is on right now. And I uh, make no bones about having the uh, pleasure to actually come and cheer on Team USA in its, uh, in its opening match, something I was really both uh, proud to do uh, as an American and yes, pleased to do as a longtime soccer fan and, um, and player. But the, the main point is, is this, the, uh, the work that we're doing is something that precedes this World Cup, continues during it, will continue after it. Um, we've already talked about the many areas in which the United States and Qatar are working very closely together through the strategic dialogue to deepen cooperation, to deepen coordination. Um, and as I've also said, Human rights is one of the key pillars of our foreign policy, uh, whether it's here in the region or, for that matter, uh, all around the world. We've been talking about human rights, labor rights, trafficking in persons with our colleagues from Qatar for a long time. And that, too, is a conversation that continued today and will continue uh, when the spotlight of the, the World Cup uh, moves on. Uh, we've documented uh, real progress. We've documented ongoing challenges, including in our annual reports. Uh, and I'd refer you, for example, to the trafficking uh, in persons report uh, that we recently put out. Uh, we appreciate the work that Qatar has done to improve labor practices, uh, including efforts to investigate, to prosecute, to convict traffickers, uh, staffing the specialized uh, trafficking police unit. In 2021, under the uh, U.S. Qatar anti-trafficking MOU, and the labor MOU that we signed. Uh, we implemented joint initiatives, and you heard the minister refer to these as well, to help Qatar build capacity, uh, to develop the technical expertise, to raise awareness, to promote the rights of migrant workers. Um, we're doing this through technical exchanges. Uh, we're doing it through uh, sharing of different uh, practices. And uh, we're helping to actually see reforms implemented uh, that, is, uh, that is critical. One of the things that I mentioned earlier is our hope and expectation that some of the uh, progress that's been made uh, continues and expands after the, uh, uh, the World Cup is over. Um, I also want to commend Qatar for reopening the humanitarian care house. That will help protect and assist victims uh, of trafficking. Uh, but as I noted, there is still uh, considerable work to be done. It's exactly why it's so important that we have these sessions, we have these discussions, so that we could take advantage of having the strategic dialogue uh, while the World Cup was going on, um, all to the better. Uh, as I said, Qatar has the spotlight on it now. You've heard the minister talk about, uh, about that. But um, much more important is what happens when the spotlight moves on. And what I can tell you will happen is our work together to continue to address uh, challenges with regard to, uh, to rights, to labor practices, uh, to, to trafficking. When it comes to the armband uh, question, look, as I said earlier, one of the most powerful things about football, about soccer, is its potential to bring the world together, quite literally, uh, as it's together here in Qatar, um, but also figuratively, in terms of just bringing human beings together and rediscovering everything that they have in common uh, and how that really does fundamentally outweigh the differences that we deal with every day. That's the power of sport. That's the power of what we see going on. And the message that we heard from the Emir is usually important, that all are welcome. And of course, it's important to make that meaningful, to put that into practice. Um, it's always concerning from my perspective when we see any restrictions on freedom of expression. Uh, it's especially so when the expression is for diversity and for inclusion. Um, and in my judgment, at least, no one on a football pitch should be forced to choose between supporting these values and playing for their team. Well, thank you. Uh, regarding, actually, uh, the crisis in 2017 and the U.S. response. Uh, well, I think that uh, uh, there is some confusion here uh, because of uh, some levels of response to, uh, uh, to what happened in 2017. 
And uh, we believe that uh, the institutional relationship between the two countries has been always the most important safeguard for this relationship. And uh, even during the crisis and uh, the time when we had probably some cloud in the understanding uh, between the two countries, the institution has been always serving as a, a facilitator of dialogue between the two governments, uh, making sure that everyone at all the levels, they have the right information about the cooperation and uh, uh, the partnership between our two countries. Uh, we've been uh, determined about this relationship, not this year, not last year, not 10 years ago, but 50 years ago. This relationship has been progressing in a positive direction. Sometimes we have probably disagreement on maybe certain issues. We talk, we engage in dialogue, we work together in bringing our uh, uh, differences closer and work on uh, uh, the common areas. And this is, has been demonstrated in a lot of initiatives. As uh, the Secretary mentioned, al Udaid Air Base has been the center to fight terrorism. And this base didn't start with uh, uh, President Biden administration or with the previous administration. This started 20 years ago. And uh, uh, this relationship has been nothing but only growing. Our political position has been always uh, 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 on different issues, on different causes, uh, very much uh, uh, principled on the international law at the UN Charter. And anything, any country, any cases violating these uh, principles, Qatar will definitely stand, stand out and be vocal. Uh, this is what we share with the US, uh, a shared vision a responsibility together to make the world a better place with a, a lot of other partners. And I believe that uh, the work that we've been doing in the past uh, a couple of years, it has been uh, significant, recognized by both countries, that both of us, our partnership, are vital for our countries. It's vital for the US to have a partner like Qatar in this region. And it's vital for us globally to have a partner like the US. And I've been saying this repeatedly, Qatar-US partnership is actually the most important international relationship that Qatar has on the international sea beyond our region. So this is something that uh, we are committed to pursue together with my colleague, Tori, uh, uh, to continue pursuing this with also the future administration, whoever will come after me or after me. Thank you. شكرا اصحاب السعاده وبذلك نختتم هذا المؤتمر الصحفي شكرا لكم على المشاركه